This is our video for AP Stats for Chapter 11, Lesson 2. We're looking at um, categorical data and another kind of chi-square distribution. Um, so think back to Chapter 1. We looked at conditional distributions. That'd be good material to review on a two-way table. And then also think back to Chapters uh, 5 and 6 in probability and what it meant for um, different samples to be independent in terms of probability. So one outcome should not affect another. Uh, so how can a chi-square test for homogeneity, that's what we're looking at this time, uh, detect that? So in 11.1, we looked at a goodness of fit test, which meant we have a claim, and we meant to see if the one distribution met that claim. For homogeneity, we're going to be comparing two distributions. So we'd have two different distributions, and we're claiming that the, the null hypothesis would be that they're the same. The alternative would be that they're not the same. So... Um, We'd want to put things into percents or proportions to describe the relationship. We want to look at ways of graphing the data, segmented bar graphs, side-by-side -side bar graphs, also just looking at the conditional distributions to see if values of one variable tend to affect the values of another, which would mean an association. If there is an association, that would mean that the two variables are not independent, since values of one affect another. If values of one variable do not affect another, then they would be independent variables. So, um, if our data is from independent random samples and uh, from different populations and the treatment groups are in a randomized comparative experiment, those are things that we need to have happen for our test of homogeneity. In terms of probability, this is what we mean by independence. Event B occurring doesn't affect the probability of event A. The probability of A stays the same even if B has already occurred and vice versa. So, we're going to go ahead and have a null hypothesis that the category of Categorical variable is the same for all populations or treatments. So that could be two different populations or it could be um, a treatment group and a placebo group. And then uh, we can compare proportions of successes and see how, that, um, how far they are from each other to see if there is statistically significant evidence that the two distributions are not equal. So here um, are the requirements we have uh, with a null hypothesis that the two distributions are equal. Uh, to find our expected counts, which is what we need to check for our conditions instead of the normal conditions. So the random condition is the same. We still need an unbiased estimator to have valid data. There is no way we can correct for that if we don't have valid data. Um, the normal condition is not because we don't have a normal distribution. Um, in chi-square, what we need is just to have a large enough expected count. So we have to have a big enough sample size times the proportion we expect in order to be able to compare the observed and expected counts. So each of the expected counts would need to each meet at least five, and we call that the large sample size condition. Then the independent condition is much the same, that if we're sampling without replacement, we can't sample more than 10% of the population, or calculations can break down, um, and that we can also, one, um, one variable shouldn't affect another, so we should have independent values, although that's what we're testing for here. So uh, this is one way to calculate expected count. Now we'll take a look at the example in class that may make this a little more simple. We're essentially seeing the total um, for one value of one variable out of the total population, and we're multiplying that by each of the populations to see what we'd expect there. So we'd have the row total times the col column total over the table total. Um, so in an example, we just add up all the the values of one category for both populations over the total population, and then for each population we'd multiply that proportion by them. Chi-square is much the same once we have that expected count, observed minus the expected squared over the expected, and then add them all up. Remember that even if you're using your calculator, you need to show at least two of those terms. You don't need to simplify them, but show them written out, and then plus dot dot dot. So degrees of freedom is the number of rows minus one times the number of columns minus one. In just a second, I'll get into that with a visual so you can see kind of where a quick basic explanation of where that comes from. Um, remember that a large value of chi-squared is evidence against the null because um, that would mean that's a result of the observations being further from the expected values um, would give us a larger value of chi-squared. So we're always looking at this area as the p-value, the percent of times we get chi-squared here or larger than it. Remember, a smaller value, zero, would mean that the values are right where we expect them to be. So that would, that would support the null hypothesis. Uh, the further we get from zero to the right, the larger chi-square, the stronger the evidence that the, dis the two distributions are not the same. The large sample size condition is the one that's different. So keep that in mind. 
So pause here. Here's your multiple choice. Uh, so when checking your conditions, which of the conditions is different from random, normal, and independent? Pause right now and answer the multiple choice. And then we'll finish up the video and you'll have your free response. So if you have one set of data and one claim, you're using a goodness of fit test for chi-square. If you have two sets of data comparing two groups or treatment in a placebo group, then you're going to use the test for homogeneity. Uh, our null hypothesis, there's no difference. It's a statement of no difference between the two distributions. Our alternative is that there is a difference in the two distributions. Our p-value is going to tell us how likely it is that we get the data that we acquire uh, given that the null hypothesis is true. So given that there really is no difference between the two distributions. Uh, the smaller that p-value gets, we're saying the less and less likely it is we, that there is no difference, that we'd get that data if there really was no difference. Uh, and that would be the result of a large chi-square statistic, which would mean that we're far from what we'd expect. If we get far enough, where we get under our significance level, then we reject our null hypothesis, and we have statistically significant evidence that there's a difference in the two, two distributions, which could be the treatment and placebo group, or two different populations. Degrees of freedom tend to be a challenge here, so let's take a look at uh, why it's the number of rows minus one times the number of columns minus one. Um, essentially, when we look at this table, so here we have three values of each, uh, of each variable. If we know these values in yellow and we have our total, then we know exactly what this other value is, the third value. Because 30 plus 39 is 69, this value must be 30 to add to 99. Uh, because 11 plus 1 is 12 and we have a total of 31, this must be 19. So essentially we're saying this row is this column is determined by the totals and the other two values and this row is determined by the totals and the two numbers above it. So these their those boxes are essentially not free. So we have 1 2 3 4 degrees of freedom. So you can either just block out the bottom uh, row and the far right column and then count up the number of boxes or do what we did. Oh there's three rows, three columns, 3 minus 1 is 2, 3 times 3 minus 1 is 2, 2 times 2 is 4. And that's how we use degrees of freedom uh, for homogeneity. Remember always to check expected counts, not the observed counts. Um, there's a lot of uh, comparable situations where we could use chi-square or a two-sample z-test, uh, for example, comparing proportions. So there's, there's situations where we could use either one, um, which is interesting because we could get the same result with either test. Um, so we'll go over that more in depth in class, how those two are the same. Here's your free res response question. What are the null and alternative hypotheses for any chi-square test of homogeneity? And then what has to happen with the two distributions that could lead us to reject or fail to reject the null hypothesis? So pause this right now. Look over the lesson summary and examples in your book. Uh, look back at the video if you need to, and then answer their free response.